All right, everyone, I want to try to start a series around cloud terminologies. We tend to use cloud as a very overused term, and we don't spend enough time discussing what do these basic terms mean and defining specific things around multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, super cloud, private cloud. What, what are the definitions? What does that actually look like? And try to put a little bit of a perspective around those terms. The one term I'm hearing around in the beginning of 2023 is repatriation. So what is repatriation? Uh, the basic definition of repatriation is sending someone going back to their own country, right? So the idea is like if I go to Ireland, on a vacation, I'll repatriate back to the US because that's where I'm originally from, that's where my citizenship is, and I'm considered you know, repatriating back to the US. What does this mean in cloud? Well, let me show you what it can mean, but it's a little overused in terms of this type of thinking. So let, let's, let's start here. So, so if you're a customer and you are in a data center, right? So you're living that happy data center life within uh, your world, and then a you know cloud migration uh, push comes from high up, and they said we're going to the cloud. So ha ha, everyone screams, dances, has a good time, and you move to AWS, you move to you know Azure or GCP or Oracle or uh, cool. You move over into one of those clouds and then this is gone. There's no longer a connection between your data center and the cloud. This is all completely gone and it's what we refer to as a data evacuation or a data center evacuation into the public cloud. And so now you live in this wonderful world up here, right? Repatriating would be moving from this wonderful world in the public cloud and then going back into a data center, right? Now, this idea is then removing all of your stuff out of the cloud and then going to a data center. Now, I would love people to kind of conceptually understand that this is a very small amount of folks that are out there. Does it happen? Sure. But I would say that this is probably less than 10% of the customers that are actually looking at moving from the cloud and then moving back from the cloud. And there's a couple of reasons to that that we'll get into as we discuss what is cloud, what is a private cloud, and what is multi-cloud. Um, but let's take this away and let's see, let's talk about what the majority of this actually looks like. So we've, seen, we've heard a lot of terms also around cloud called like cloud chaos and cloud smart. Um, and we'll get that, dig into that more in our multi-cloud discussion, but the concept is going to cloud without thought of what should be there or just basically shoving everything into the cloud, right? Where cloud smart is more specific, how do we want to actually start consuming clouds and, and, and how do we move specific workloads into the cloud? Now, what does cloud consumption normally look like and i would say is probably a healthy way of, of viewing it so instead of this like going back and forth and all of this kind of chaos that's happening it's more like this so you live in a data center and then let's just say aws azure gcp Oracle are up here. There is a connection between your data center and the public cloud, but it looks a little bit more like this. So the idea here is that you're not evacuating from anywhere. You're consuming the services and the solutions that you need within the cloud and within on-prem, right? So a lot of repatriation is just a lot of dramatic terminology that they say to scare one way or the other. And in my opinion, repatriating from the cloud to, a, to your data center 
may be a large majority of your workloads, maybe production workloads to reduce cost or whatever, but then you'll have developers that still want that agility to build their workloads the way that they want and to move in different services within the public cloud that they don't have that versatility within the data center. So this is where you'll start seeing kind of a spread of, okay, well, this works in the cloud and this doesn't work in the cloud. So data evacuation, I don't really like it because at the end of the day, there are services that they can consume and there are services that need to stay in the cloud. Data repatriation or, uh, or cloud repatriation or data center repatriation, whichever way you want to call it. I don't like it either because at the end of the day, you're going to have services that are in the cloud that you want to consume. Now you're going to say, Nathan, I, I, I don't think what you're saying is correct at all. And you'll want to argue, sure, hit me up on Twitter, call me out, let's talk about it. Love to have that discussion. But at the end of the day, there's some, there are things that are considered cloud and we'll take Azure here very easily because it's just low hanging fruit. And we'll just talk about you know, Office 365 or Windows 365 or Microsoft 365, whichever way, whichever one term you want me to use. But think of it in that light. So do you like running Exchange servers in a data center? Do you like hosting your Active Directory or do you prefer to have like single sign-on across multiple different services and prefer to have a cloud-based SharePoint, Teams, uh, cloud-based uh, ability to do emails and all of that things? I'm pretty sure most companies prefer to have that cloud-based solution that has a limited amount of need for individuals to have to actually do administrative tasks, updates, and all those different features on those areas. So that's one example of multi-cloud or cloud smart, where that's a cloud so service that you are actually consuming, that's a SaaS service or software as a service, that you're consuming that is not part of your private cloud. It's probably linked to your private cloud or your data center. And you are consuming it regularly and that is a cloud smart example. So when we talk about repatriation, are you probably gonna run out of Office 365? I seriously doubt it. Because at the end of the day, there's just too much cost effectiveness behind the service that it maintains those incredibly important services that must be up. I don't think anybody wants to remember the time when email died and nobody could email out or in or marketing couldn't send out their marketing pushes and all that th all of those things happen. I don't think anybody wants to go back to those times. So that's what we tend to think about. We'll go into more in terms of what does a private cloud look like, multi-cloud, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll go from one thing to the next. Appreciate you joining me today. I hope everyone has a great time.